Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. What employers need to know when classifying workers as employees or independent contractors. The IRS wants money. That's what you need to know. And if you get this wrong, the IRS might take that money right out of your hide. Oh, no. I didn't know the IRS knew where my money hide hole was. In any case, here we go. We got the IRS Tax Tip 2021-140, September 22nd, 2021. It is critical for business owners to correctly determine whether the individuals providing services are employees or independent contractors. So let me give a quick overview of this. If you are an employer or if you're an employee, then you might think you have a preference as to whether you're going to be classified as an employee or independent contractor. But the IRS would like to have hard and fast rules as to whether someone should be classified as an employee or independent contractor. From the IRS perspective, you would think that they would lean towards wanting to have someone classified as an employee because when that is the case, the IRS typically has more leverage on the employer to report more of the information related to the employee. And remember how all this kind of works. The IRS is typically going to be pressuring the payer because they have leverage on the payer. And that's the case when you're talking about an employee situation, when you're talking about a contractor situation, when you're talking about any kind of payment that is going out because the payer is the one that wants to basically report the information to get a deduction on their taxes. So the IRS will basically say, if you want that deduction, then you need to give us certain information about who you paid the money to so that we can make sure that they are paying their income taxes because any deduction to you is income to basically somebody else. If they can have someone claimed as an employee, not only can they get the basic information about who you paid, but they can also get the information and require you to issue the, 10 the W-2 form to give that to the IRS so they can have a really good understanding and even force you to take the withholdings from the employees and pay them directly to the government. So you would think the government would kind of be leaning towards they would like you to have an employee more than an independent contractor so that they can get the employer to have more kind of leverage over getting the money from the employees in terms of the income. So what does it mean to be an employee or independent contractor? Typically, the more independent someone is in the work they are performing, in other words, if you're hiring someone and they're basically not a business generally, but they're a sole proprietorship and they have control over the end task that they will be doing, then they're more likely to be classified possibly as an independent contractor if, of course, the employer is coming in and they're doing work on a nine to five type of job, doing various tasks where you have complete control in essence of what they're doing on a day to day and you're providing all the tools and that kind of stuff, then you would think they would be an employee more likely to be classified as an employee given the rules that the IRS is setting up. However, you can imagine many kind of scenarios where the, where the line is not quite so clear and you have that kind of gray line and you might end up in a situation where both the employer and the employee possibly wants the a contractor type of situation. And that could be easier on the employer. The employee also has pros and cons with a contractor type of situation due to the fact that they would then be reporting on a Schedule C, possibly allowing them to deduct more, more deductions, although they would be su subject in that case to things like the self-employment tax, which could actually be higher than payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare, and they may not be then getting the benefits that you would get if you were an employee. So there's going to be pros and cons on both sides. From an employer situation, what you want to do is make sure that whatever classification you're using, and typically that would mean if you're classifying as a contractor, that they qualify as a contractor. And if the IRS was to come back at you and say, we're going to question whether or not they should be an, an employee or not, that you have justification according to the rules of the IRS to classify them as a contractor. It's less likely that if you classify them as an employee incorrectly, that the IRS will have a problem with that, right? They could be clearly a contractor. You classify them as an employee for whatever reason. The IRS will probably be happy with that because, again, that means that you're giving the IRS more information and in actually making the withholdings. So usually... It's, uh, it's erring on the side of classifying someone as a contractor when the IRS thinks that they should be an employee that could cause you trouble. What trouble could that cause? 
Well, if the IRS comes back and says they should be an employee, you classified them as a contractor, they might want then payroll taxes, Social Security, Medicare, federal unemployment tax, and so on. Okay, so an employee is generally considered anyone who performs services if the business can control what will be done and how it will be done. What matters is that the business has the right to control the details of how the workers' services are performed. Independent contractors are normally people in independent trade, business, or profession in which they offer their services to the public. Doctors, dentists, veterinarians, lawyers, accountants, contractors, subcontractors, public uh, stenographers or auctioneers are generally independent contractors. Now, again, you can look at some of these like a lawyer or an accountant or some kind of contractor. If those contractors and lawyers and whatnot have like one client, oftentimes because they're working for a big company and, and stuff, you can see how they can start to see it looks like, well, now it looks like they're kind of <laughs> working for one company and could be then uh, an employee or should be classified as an employee. And again, you can think of many other trades where it's kind of like a gray area in terms of whether or not they should be an employ employee or not. And you want to delineate that line as much as you can if you are in the case where you'd like to classify them as an employer, which could be beneficial on both sides. You'd like to do whatever from a negotiation standpoint with, of course, whoever you're working with, that would be a beneficial to you know both parties involved and then try to make the government happy so they don't you know, do something to destroy you or anything. So independent contractor versus employees. Whether a worker is an independent contractor or an employee depends on the relationship between the worker and the business. Generally, there are three categories to consider. We have the behavioral control. Does the company control or have the right to control what the worker does and how the worker does the job? So you have control over what the worker is doing, how much control. Clearly, again, if they're in the office, and you're basically giving them tasks on an hourly basis and all the tools to do them, you would think employee. But again, you can, you can, the further away from that you go, the more likely that you can classify as a contractor. Financial control, does the business direct or control the financial and business aspects of the worker's job? Are the business aspects of the worker's job controlled by the payer? Things like how the worker is paid, are expenses reimbursed, who provides tools, supplies, et cetera. So if you are in like a gray kind of area, if you're thinking about, you know, whether someone could be a contractor or not, then these types of things, these types of control things are, are things you want to be considering. How are you paying them? Are you paying them like a contractor or are you paying them more like an employee? Those are things that they, they might look at. Who's reimbursing if you're reimbursing payments as if they're an employee, but hiring them as a contractor, that would be, you would think that the, con that the contractor would be invoicing you right? And then you pay them <laughs> based on the invoice and so on. So who provides the tools? Again, if you, if they're asking you for the tools or getting reimbursed for the tools and this and that, they look a lot more like a contractor or I'm sorry, an employee than a contractor in that case. So relationship of the parties, uh, are there written contracts or employee type benefits such as pension plan, insurance, vacation pay? So if you're saying someone is a contractor and then you got like a pension plan or they're part of your employee group insurance or they, you have vacation things set up, that's weird for a contractor. You would think again that they would just be billing you <laughs> and, and, you know, with an invoice and if they were a contractor. And so the IRS might look at those things and try to, you know, charge you payroll taxes, right? So will the relationship continue and is the work performing a key aspect of the business? So if you're hiring someone to do a one-time thing, fix my website, do this, that, then obviously that would be more of a contractor situation. If you're hiring someone on a more uh, regular basis, may still be a contractor situation, but it look, it starts to look more like an employee-employer type of relationship. So you want to be, again, th and those kind of relationships could kind of change over time. And as they do so, some of these things, you get like job creep, you just get kind of relationship creep that kind of grows over time and and over time it could have started as a contractor and then they kind of gradually are looking more like an employee you want to reassess those those areas and say well do i want them as an employee should i just hire them as an employee or do i need to make sure that i'm d making the line clear in the event that the iris comes in and questions this relationship that i'm billing them they're invoicing me i'm i'm documenting this so that we can establish that we are a contractor 
type of relationship. Misclassified worker, misclassifying workers as independent contractors adversely affects employees because the employer's share of taxes is not paid. So it adversely affects the employees. Yeah. And the employee's share is not withheld. If a bus business misclassifies an employee without a reasonable basis, the business can be held liable for the employment taxes for workers. Generally, an employer must withhold and pay taxes, Social Security and Medicare taxes, as well as unemployment taxes. So they kind of indicate right here that they're trying to kind of indicate as if, you know, if you do, if you hire someone as a contractor and they're actually an employee that you're doing them a disservice and and the and that the the other person the other party would always be better off kind of as a contractor because you'd get to withhold their taxes and stuff that's not necessarily true right you could very well be in a situation where the other party wants to be a contractor and you still have this kind of issue you might have both sides saying hey contractor relationship works great and and the reason that is for the other side is that again there's pros and cons if you are a contractor to being a contractor or an employee if you're an employee, you could get more benefits and so on. If you're a contractor, you do have to pay self-employment tax, which is Social Security and Medicare when you do the taxes. However, you do have that independence that would be involved in your work and so on. And you basically uh, could de possibly deduct more types of things depending on what kind of your job you're doing. That could be quite significant. You might have deductions that will be more likely to be taken, such as gas, mileage, home office type of deductions, which can be quite significant and could make it beneficial to be a contractor. So again, obviously the IRS is, is leaning towards, you know, the, the, the more reporting, more information, which would mean they would like more people to be as employees so that they can then force the employer to give them all the information about the employee and be their collection agency for them, forcing the employer to take the withholdings and pay that directly to the government. So the workers who believe they have been improperly classified as independent contractors can use form 8919, uncollected social security and Medicare taxes wages. There's a link to that here to figure and report their share of uncollected social security and Medicare tax due on their compensation. So the voluntary, so notice, the, if you look at these taxes, the payroll taxes, if you're an employee, then the employee, then you have to get some of it taken out of your check, meaning the employer is actually responsible for taking the money out of your check so and then paying it to the IRS. And then the employer also has to match it, kind of like a retirement plan. So that would go in. You wouldn't really get that because that's just going into Social Security and Medicare. But that's how it kind of works there. If you're an independent contractor, you're going to calculate your net income, which would be, you know, your revenue minus your expenses, and you might get more expenses available to you in that case, given the fact that you might be able to deduct some of the major things being like a car, possibly mileage and home office that you might not have as an employee. But then on that net income, you'd have to be paying self-employment tax and Social Security there in the form of, of um, self-employment tax, which is Social Security and Medicare. And you have to pay basically the employer and employee portion on that net income. So it's actually kind of higher in that case. So that's where, again, the IRS seems to kind of be pushing people towards, you know, the employment, the, the employee kind of scenario rather than a contractor. So voluntary classification settlement program, the voluntary classification settlement program, there's a link to that here, is an optional program that provides taxpayers with an opportunity to reclassify their workers as employees for future employment tax purposes. This program offers partial relief for federal uh, employment taxes for eligible taxpayers who agree to, pro to prospectively treat their workers as employees. So if you're in a situation, you're saying, oh, man, I've been t I've been treating this person as a contractor. I think the IRS can come in here and just reclassify them as an employee and prove their position fairly quickly and then just charge me back payroll taxes for like the fast five or 10 years or something. That and you're saying, I don't want to do that because then I'll owe taxes. And the IRS is trying to get you into compliance right now to get them as an employee going forward. You might be able to opt in in that case and say, hey, look. You know, I don't want you coming after me and taking like 10 years of taxes. How about we start from this point forward and then I'll give you all my information about the employee and have complete control over them and, and so on and report all their income to you in the future. If you don't try to go backwards and take my money for the last five years or something like that. So you might 
think about that kind of situation. So taxpayers must meet certain eligibility requirements and apply for filing form 8952 application for voluntary classification settlement program. There's a link to that here and enter into a closing agreement with the IRS. Who is self-employed? Generally, someone is self-employed if any of the following apply to them. They carry on a trade or business as a sole proprietor or as an independent contractor. So if you're self-employed, you're an independent contractor, you typically have like a Schedule C attached to your 1040. So they, they are a member of a partnership that carries on a trade or business. They are otherwise in business for themselves, including part-time business. So even if you're a part-time business, you may still be an independent contractor. We have a lot more of them these days with the gig work and all this kind of stuff and the downturn in the economy and everybody quitting or not wanting jobs aren't working for you, right? So you can, you can then, a lot of people might still have W-2 wages, but also be picking up something else as well. You would still be an independent contractor in the event or in the wages that you're taking on the side and the part-time. So self-employed individuals, including those who earn money from the gig economy, the gig economy, you could see the IRS shaking their fist at the gig economy because they, because sometimes they don't have it all locked down on the gig economy. They're trying to you're trying to get the stranglehold on that one. So in any case, if you're part of the gig economy, you still owe like money to the IRS, even if it's not reported or anything. You, you, you got to, you, you, the IRS wants their thing. So you, there's a link to the gig economy work or generally required to file a tax return and make estimated quarterly tax payments. There's a link to that here. They also generally must pay self-employment tax with Social Security, Medicare tax, as well as income tax. These taxes qualify for the home office deduction if they use part of their home for the business. Now, again, that's one of the big deductions if you're a sole proprietor, a contractor, as opposed to an employee. If you're an employee classified, then... You, you may not be able to get a lot of the deductions, right? Because the thought is that the employer is going to take take care of you and, and pay for all the stuff you need, all the tools and all the stuff. But if if you are in sole proprietorship, some of the big ones that might be paid would be, you know, the home office deduction. And again, like all, oftentimes the gas and whatnot on the car mileage and so on are two, are two biggies, which could make the contracting beneficial to do.